Good morning, everyone. Thank you to be here in that beautiful Sunday morning, Saturday morning, sorry. Now, I will talk about history of medical simulation. So, when you consider the broadest definition of medical simulation being an imitation of some real thing, state, or affair, or process, the historical roots of simulation of the practical skills, problem solving, and judgment are evident. One of the first examples of military simulation is the construction of the game of chess in the 6th century. In the 8th century, in Paris, father and son developed an obstetric mannequin made of human pelvis and a dead baby. The phantom, as the mannequin was named, enabled obstetricians to teach delivery techniques, which resulted in reduction of maternal and infant mortality rates. On the other hand, historical data documented the use of animals in the training of surgical skills since the Middle Age throughout modern times. While the unsystematic use of inanimate and wife simulators is reported along the history of medicine, the origin of medical simulation as we know nowadays come from other science, from aviation. The first powered flight occurred in 1903, and 20 years later, Edwin Wing built, the, built at uh, patented a prototype blue box flight trainer, believing that there must be an easier, safer, and less expensive way to learn how to fly. And here you can see this first flight simulator, blue box, and this is nowadays modern flight simulators which closely resemble the real airplane cabin. There are a few dimensions of the, mod of the modern medical simulations and we will go through every one, every each of them, and we will talk about their history. First one is the standard is the patient which are actors used to educate and evaluate history taking and physical examination. Past, pa part task trainers may be simple anatomical models of body parts in their normal state or representing a disease. The modern surgical simulators are, are part task trainers as well. Next modality is computer patient, which, which are interactive and may be software-based or part of the internet-based virtual world. These patients serve the same function as the standard design patient in many areas, and, but at, on a reduced cost. The most comprehensive form of simulation is the electronic patient. It can be either mannequin or virtual reality-based, and replication of the clinical environment is integral in the simulator. This man is Harold Barrow, who began the use of actors as a patient to educate neurology students in 1963. And the years later, the standardized patient became more and more popular. And in 2004, uh, they were incorporated in the US medical students national licensing process in step two clinical skills. First task trainer was Resustiani and it was born in 1960. Uh, his father is, uh, its father is Asmund Lerdel and here you can see Asmund with uh, uh, Resustiani. She was initially designed for the practice of mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, and the more interesting is the history of her face. It was based on the dead mask of the girl from River Seine, a famous French drowning victim. Lerdo wanted to encourage the practice of rescue technique by the design of sympathetic simulated victim. Annie evolved to incorporate in spring in her chest for practice of cardiopulmonary resuscitation. This guy is Harvey, 
It is a cardiology patient simulator. It's a full-sized mannequin that simulates 27 cardiac conditions. And it was first demonstrated in 1968 at the American Heart Association scientific session by Dr. Michelle Gordon of the University of Miami. The simulator displays various physical findings, including blood pressure growth rotation, bilateral jugular venous pulse waveforms, and arterial pulses, precordial impulses, and auscultatory events in the four classic areas. These are synchronized with the pulse and viral respiration. Harvey can simulate a spectrum of cardiac disease by varying blood pressure, breathing, pulses, heart sounds, and murmurs. So, Susciani and Harvey represented the cornerstone of the beginning of modern era of medical simulation. After their development, many other types of simulators were developed for education and training. All of them share common characteristics, the use of technology to achieve a more effective learning experience. There was four factors which convert in 90s to promote the design of advanced task trainer training systems. The first one was visible human project, the development of mini invasive surgical techniques, the EPIC system, which is a technolo technology that can create an experience of touch by applying force, vibration, motion to the user, and of course the computer. The Visible Human Project was completed in 1994. It, it, is, it uses imaging data from actual human cadavers to develop anatomical models that allow a three-dimensional viewing and manipulation of anatomical structures. These images now are the basis for much of the work in surgical simulation, medical virtual reality, and internet-based simulation. They took two body of prisoners uh, who was sentenced to death, so they, was health, they were healthy. And after the death sentence, they, they were frozen and uh, sliced by microtome, and uh, the data from the body was put in the virtual reality, and this is the result. Minimally inv invasive surgical techniques uh, become to uh, become an alternative to tra traditional open operations, and uh, was countered by extended long learning curve, as Dr. Aleman showed you the long learning curve to transradial access. Jaron Weiner created the first simplified vision of intra-abdominal anatomy that allowed practice of cholecystectomy. Some simulators emphasize the development of eye-hand coordination in the laparoscopic environment. Uh, the simple laparoscopic training box by U.S. Surgical Corporation facilitated practice of precision pointing, peeling a grape or chicken skin, knot tying, and precise mov movement of objects. Simulators were introduced for ophthalmology, orthopedics, vascular intervention, and endoscopy. This is so, the first ophthalmology simulator which integrated manipulation of haptic instruments with visualization of ophthalmic anatomy throughout a microscope. This is the first interventional cardiology training system. The simulated factors include fluoroscopy, catheter physics, hemodynamics, haptics, and fluid flow. This is a Sydney perfusion simulator, which uh, was used for rehearsing of the confrontation of critical care during cardiopulmonary bypass. Ultrasim is the first ultrasound simulation mannequin, originated in 1995 and was based on real US patient data set. It initially replicated abdominal pathology relevant to obstetrics, but soon expanded to representation of diverse intra-abdominal problems. It was one of the first mannequin products to include 
education, education adjuncts such, such as Calcio syllabus, instruction manuals, and clinical case presentation. The first recitation specific software was introduced in 1983 and gas man was introduced in 19th. Its software display classic computer based tutorial on anesthetic gas uptake and distribution. This is how it looks like uh, the modern simulator. This is a microsim, a multimedia product by Lerdo. It was designed for practice of recitation and management of medical emergencies. There are models for, for pre-hospital and uh, in-hospital simulation. The first primitive full-scale human patient anesthesia simulator was constructed in the University of South, Southern California in the same era as the initial standardized patient work. Its name was SIM1 and was, and was produced by engineer Stefan Abramson, physician Jefferson Denson, and IRJ General Corporation. SIM1 facial features include blinking eyes, pupils that could change, si change size and an opening jaw. The chest features were respiratory motion and heartbeat that was synchronized with carotid and temporal pressure pulses and associated with blood pressure. The mannequin demonstrates the response to a handful of drugs and the lower performance of basic airway management. In 1986, David Gava built the comprehensive anesthesia simulation environment prototype at Stanford. He is thought to be one of the pioneers of the modern medical simulation. Gava partnered with Searling and launched a full-scale mannequin system and in 1988. It is a combination of the case system, the anesthesia simulator recorder, mathematical models, and the CLing simulation technology. The Stanford team was focused on team performance during critical events. They patterned their program after the source ma management from fly simulation and titled anesthesia crisis research management. The prototype became commercial product during the 90s. The University of Basel pioneered the team oriented medical simulation in 1998-94. It integrated surgical and anesthesia simulation in the simultaneous training of entire operating room teams. By the end of 90s, human patient simulation of the crisis management he had begun to invite medical disciplines other than anesthesi anesthesiology as follows, armed force medicine, intensive care medicine, pediatrics, emergency medicine, surgery, trauma, cardiology, dentistry, emergency medicine, military medicine. Human patient simulation infiltrated even undergraduate medical education. Medical educators acknowledge that simulation is the future of medical education and hardware simulator taught introduction to physical diagnosis and clinical skills. The human patient simulation replicated any, replaced animal exercises and demonstrated physiology at some institution. The human patient simulator was validated and used to evaluate medical students' acute care airway skills. The debate over the use of mannequin-based simulation for competence testing is heated. Surgical specialties are moving rapidly forward with incorporating simulation into competency requirement during residency at Let's Angel. The American College of, College of Surgeons have begun to offer a process of certification for multidisciplinary sim simulation centers. And this is the this certificate for the Medical Simulation Training Center in the Medical University of Polio. Five years ago, it was established in the Medical University of Polio, and it is a one model simulation training center. As you can see here, where students and postgraduates and specialists can train 
on various simulators you see that you have seen the angular there are many other sim simulators which closely resembles the real patients and real situations conferences are another important aspect of the history because they disseminate the information about simulation it began at safety conferences throughout 1988 and 1989. Many came products under development or showcased long before their commercialization. Medicine Meets Virtual Reality is an independent conference that focuses on VR and procedural simulation. This group first met it in 1991. The Society of in Europe for Simulation Applied to Medicine, or CESAM, was established in 1993, and biannual conferences were held from 1994 to 1998. Since 1998, CESAM educational meetings have occurred annually. The first two US conferences on simulators in anesthesiology education were held at the University of Rochester in 1995 and 1996. The third meeting was co-sponsored by the Society of Technology and Anesthesia in 1998, and fourth conference was a joint effort with the Society of Education and Anesthesiology in 1999. A standardized patient meeting has been held annually since 1998, and in 2001, they established an association for standardized patient educators. The first international meeting of medical simulation was held in 2001 as an adjunct to the Society of Technology in an Anesthesiology Annual Meeting. The Society for Simulation of Healthcare was established as an independent entity in 2004. The first simulation meeting sponsored entirely by the group occurred in January 2006. During the same quarter, the inaugural issue of the journal Simulation in Healthcare was released, and this journal was also adopted as the official journal for the CESAM the same spring. And now you are attending the fourth conference on simulation training in medicine in Bulgaria. Uh, it, this tradition was started, four, was started four years ago, and yesterday was established the Bulgarian Society of Simulation Training in Medicine in Medical University of Plovdiv. So, in the conclusion, I would like to talk, tell you some uh, one thought. Good judgment comes from experience, and often experience comes from bad judgment. So, don't worry to make mistakes, but make it on the simulators. That was all that I wanted to tell you. Now, the floor is yours for questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kovacic.